Thank you so much. Okay, and hello everyone. My name is Kelsey Baird and I am running for the position of city councilor with Lethbridge City Council. The next four years are going to be fairly formative for the city, I believe. Um, we're coming out of, hopefully coming out of a global pandemic. We have an economic crisis that we've never seen before. Um, we have a climate crisis that's encroaching and needs to be looked after, as well as we have an opioid crisis that's ongoing in our community. We also have issues of division and a lot of different stressors in our community right now. To deal with all of these, I believe that we need a progressive council who's ready to tackle uh, all of the issues as they come up, as well as make some really solid foundations for the future. That's why I'm hoping that you will vote for me on October 18th. Thank you so much and have a good one. Um, now, Marissa Black. You're just muted still. <laughs> so sorry. That's embarrassing. Okay. <laughs> okay, bonjour, hello. My name is Marissa Black, and I want to be your next city councillor. I was born and raised in Lethbridge, where I received my Bachelor of Science, and I'm currently finishing a Bachelor of Management in Accounting. Prior to enrolling in accounting, I spent seven years working in sustainable agriculture, including novel crop development and complex carbohydrate research for new ruminant nutrition. During this time, I had the opportunity to lead and manage my own projects, as well as collaborate on others. I am well-versed in evidence-based decision-making and ensuring the needs of all shareholders are met. Through my education in accounting, I also recognize the importance of ensuring city council is leveraging public resources for good social and economic outcomes. Due to my education and life experiences as a person living with disabilities, I believe I bring a unique perspective not currently represented on council. Thank you for taking time out of your evening to listen to this forum and I'll see you at the polls on the 18th. Thank you. Uh, Mark Campbell. Thank you very much, uh, Oki. My name is Mark Campbell. I'm seeking my second term on city council. Uh, my first term, to say the least, was very challenging. It's like uh, welcome to Apollo 13, Commander Lovell. Uh, should be clear sailing. Obviously, it was not. Uh, there were unprecedented things that happened, including a drug crisis that's never been seen before, a worldwide pandemic that crippled the entire world. But despite that, many great things happened, especially downtown. So many things uh, that I was uh, happy to be in, a part of with the down to, with uh, the heart of the city, which includes um, the uh, the park and ride opened, uh, the 608 clinic. Thanks to the uh, trip program, we also had more renovations on Third Avenue, revitalization. Things are really happening downtown. Uh, we, we've also got uh, the post office, Festival Square is about to, to be built. So there's so many things that are happening with the downtown and so many more things that uh, I want to be a part of. So I'm looking forward to a very invigorating next term. I ask for your vote. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, Jeff Carlson. Thanks, Emily. I'm Jeff Carlson. It's been my great honor to serve you on City Council. I'm here tonight asking again for your support to continue working on your behalf. My platform is simple. It's I care. It stands for innovation, compassion, arts, recreation, and the environment. But tonight, we're here to discuss our downtown and how all of us can continue to support the heart of our city. Please know that I've always been a champion for and of our downtown, both as a city councillor and as a member of the Heart of the City Committee. And I promise to continue to be that champion. I have the skills, the background, and the experience to tackle the challenges and seize the opportunities, not just for downtown, but for all of our community. So if you care for Lethbridge, please vote Jeff Carlson. Together, we can continue to make Lethbridge the best place to live, work, play, and grow. Vote Carlson. Thank you. Thank you. Ben Christensen. Good evening, uh, fellow councillor candidates and uh, members of the city of Lethbridge who are watching. My name is Ben Christensen. I am, a, I am running for Lethbridge City Council. Lethbridge is a place that we call our home and it is a place that I've called my home for many years. I have a background in entrepreneurship, sales, management and marketing. I believe that our city 
is uh, lacking strong and accountable leadership at the present time. And it is my goal to provide and hopefully drive that change for our city's future coming forward. And so that is my uh, motivation for running for city council, along with improving the quality of life in Lethbridge as a community. That's why I started the Come Unity movement, which is uh, to promote random acts of kindness and compassion in our city as a part of promoting that strength and a strength and uh, unity in our city. So I do hope that uh, I will have your support and thank you for the opportunity to serve you as our community. Thank you. And now we'll move on to Belinda Croson. Okay, good evening, everyone. My name is Belinda Croson and I'm running for re-election for Lethbridge City Council. I have worked hard representing all of you over the last four years. Of course, my, down, my support for downtown long predates my time on council. I volunteered for years on Heart of Our City. I promote the downtown and downtown businesses through guided tours, through my work on the history and beer tours, by helping to write historic plaques and more and more volunteer work. I love downtown and I know you do too. Yes, there are some problems. The city became complacent. Year after year of tax increases with money going to the same programs and then being surprised we didn't get different results. We heavily, heavily underfunded areas of concern and then we wonder why we have social problems. Lethbridge needs long-term thinking a researcher, a problem solver, someone who can see issues from multiple perspectives, a historian and a teacher. I am that person. On October 18th, vote Belinda Croson for Lethbridge City Council. Thank you all. Thank you. Rico Dojic. Hi, I'm Rico Dojic and I'm running for mayor. No, I'm just kidding. Just to give you a bit of background about me, I was born in the former Yugoslavia and emigrated here with my parents. I went to St. Basil School on the north side and graduated from Catholic Central High. I received an undergraduate degree at the University of Lethbridge and off to Edmonton for my law degree. I have practiced in Lethbridge as a lawyer for almost 30, 40 years. I've appeared in all levels of court, including the Supreme Court of Canada. Most recently, I've been associated with the downtown firm Davidson and Williams, who have been around since 1885. I only work part-time, so for those who are wondering, I have lots of time to devote to councillor duties if elected. I have pretty well called Lethbridge my home for most of my life. I was married here, I raised a family here, and I have a great time with my grandchildren who thankfully live here. I have a simple promise uh, for everyone, and my promise is to inform myself, to listen, to ask questions, and to make the best decisions possible. I would uh, request that you vote for me, Reiko Dodik, for city councillor on October 18. Thank you very much. Thank you. Jerry here. Thank you, Emily. And thank you uh, to those who are able to join us today. And okay, hello. Nistaniko uh, Pitana. My name is Jerry Firth. I'm a candidate running for Lethbridge City Council. Uh, I have four sites for the vision of Lethbridge, and that's community strength, economic sustainability, environmental responsibility, and democratic integrity. I believe that a balanced approach is what's necessary to move us forward as a community, but specifically there are targeted areas that we need to address. First of all, I think we need to put people first and bring people together, which is a foundation to community. As a social worker who's done uh, plenty of work in community development, along with uh, addressing a lot of the social needs, uh, I have an extensive uh, background in understanding homelessness and addictions, as well as the housing continuum which are social issues that face us uh, in the city where we need strong leadership and guidance and direction to help move us through to address these social issues. Our economic sustainability is an important aspect to continue to weather the storms of the impacts that we see from uh, climate change and the downturns in the economy uh, due to COVID and other factors. But we have a wonderful opportunity in Lethbridge with- Thank you, Jerry, that's your time there. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Um, now we'll move on to Bill Ginther. My apologies for not uh, having the video up. My uh, laptop isn't liking me today. 
that's happened once or twice before. Uh, but I want to say, uh, first of all, my name is Bill Ginther. I'm really pleased to be involved in the democratic process that our city has undertaken now to elect uh, uh, persons that will represent them on city council. For those of you who don't know me, here's just a brief introduction. Uh, I've lived in Lethbridge for the past eight years, have served as the executive director of the Lethbridge Soup Kitchen since uh, early July 2017. Uh, I served on several other um, city committees uh, to determine ways of improving the city that we all call home. I, I care deeply about our city. Um, I want to make sure that uh, I listen to people and hear what their concerns are, uh, along with the uh, uh, various personal attributes that I've identified in some of the literature and my website and so on, uh, those being honesty and integrity, accountability, fiscal responsibility, active listening and common sense, which is no longer common. And lastly, servant, leader, servant leadership is something that I really focus on, which basically means you are leading by serving. Uh, my uh, hope is to, when elected, uh, to create a safer downtown and the city generally by allocating place resources to chronically. Thank you, areas. Bill. That's Thank your you. time. <laughs> okay. um, next, we'll move on to uh, Zachary Hampton. Thank you, Emily. Hello, my name is Zachary Hampton. I'm here to help build a uh, life bridge into the best city you've ever lived in. Uh, ever, I've, ever since I, I was a child here and I, I grew up in Lethbridge, I, I've just known the great potential the city's had. And over the years, as I went to university here for political science, and as I worked in the not-for-profit industry for uh, just over nine years now, I've been able to witness and experience firsthand a lot of the the issues that we've that we've had in the city and been able to see a lot of wonderful people bringing forward solutions. So it's my hope that through uh, uh, just through uh, emphasizing the economy, safety, and through uh, working together to solve the major social issues, that we can continue to build this great city together. So on October 18th, I invite you to vote Hampton and to just remember, Zach's got your back. Thank you. We'll now move on to Dale Lear. Good evening, I'm Dale Lear, your common sense candidate for city council. Now the KPMG review makes it abundantly clear that the city has been a rudderless ship for years and the old ways of thinking will no longer work. It is time for change and not only the captain at the helm, we need a new crew on deck, one with fresh ways of thinking and new ideas. My top priority is economic development, creating more good jobs and increasing business activity and this will provide the funding for the changes we all would like to see while keeping property taxes in check. Second is, is transparency, putting the decision-making process, un, process under a microscope with frequent and extensive community input. And third is accountability, providing publicly disclosed performance reports so that as taxpayers, we can once again be confident of getting full value for money. Finally, dealing with our social issues head on with evidence-based programs designed to make Lethbridge a thriving community where everyone wants to live, work, play, and invest. Thank you. Thank you. Ryan Lepko. Hello, my name is Ryan Lepko. I was born in Lethbridge and I've lived here my whole life. Uh, I do have a vested interest in this community being a lifelong resident. Uh, we really do live in an amazing city that has so much to offer. And I'm running because I care about Lethbridge and I want to be part of the solution for some of the more challenging issues that we are facing. I will be the voice for those who have not been heard and provide a fresh perspective and ideas going forward. Thank you. We'll now move on to Darcy Logan. Okay, hello, my name is Darcy Logan. For 20 years, I've been a volunteer in our community I've worked in our community, and the ethos of my campaign is to love Lethbridge. Uh, there's a lot of uh, core components to my platform, but one of the important ones is a vibrant downtown. We need to drive consumer activity into the core, and we need to support uh, cultural opportunities, festivals in the park, while finding a sustainable path forward to deal with some of the social crises that we are facing there. I've been an ambassador for our community with community partners and provincial partners like the Alberta Media Arts Alliance and the Alberta Foundation for the Arts. Um, I hope I can count on your support on October 18th. Thanks. Thank you. Shelby McLeod. 
Good evening. Okay. I'm Shelby McLeod, and I have been in Lethbridge 35 years. I came from Tabor, and I was the person who started the Tabor Corn Fest. It was a hoot nanny, and then we changed the name. And so I used to tell people, well, I'm the hillbilly from Tabor that started the Corn Fest. So that's my little inside joke. But I have always believed that people do not have to uh, tell what they can do. They just put their shoulders to the wheel and they work collectively. I, I am uh, chair of the Canadian Mental Health Association here in Lethbridge. I sit on division board. I am also on the Lethbridge Food Bank. And I had the blessing of working for Clint Dunford for 10 years while he was a minister of the crown. I was his chief of staff and we had a billion dollar budget. And the one thing that I used to say to the people that called me of many and varied stripes from judges to the ordinary person on the street was we have to have a common sense approach. The, <clears throat> the application of what we were administering today has to work for the person. And so I think that this council under the leadership of the new mayor will come together and will be a great asset to the vision of the uh, city and the province. And I Thank ask that you me. support me. Thank you so much. Uh, John Middleton Hope. Good evening. Thank you very much for your time. Um, just to give you a, a very brief background, I have more than almost 30 years of policing experience in a variety of different capacities, most in leadership, uh, more than 30 years uh, teaching university and college and about 15 years, uh, the last 15 years as an international cons consultant. I have three key areas of my platform. First is public safety. Second is leadership. And third is continuous economic development. We need serious people for this council. We need people that have good ideas and we need people that have vision. And in the end, uh, I hope that you support me in my uh, candidacy for city council. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Nick Palladino. Gee, my name is Nick Palladino and I'm running for a seat uh, to represent you on city council. I also ran a campaign back in 2017. Uh, my background is in local government, specifically uh, public service. I retired from the uh, Lethbridge County a few years back. I was their development officer and then manager of planning and development uh, for over 30 years. So I do have a working knowledge of the uh, Municipal Government Act. I also understand the roles of both council and that of administration. As your city council, I would encourage controlled spending on things the city needs. And I would support all programs that foster development and safety in the downtown. I also support all initiatives that will attract clean industrial and commercial land and activity to the city and region. I also believe we ought to collaborate more with the rural municipalities around us, the counties, the town, the First Nation lands to create a stronger region together. I know that's what the province is encouraging and if we aspire to be the ag food hub of Southern Alberta, we have no choice but to work together. In closing, thank you for listening and please vote on October 18th. For more information, please visit my website at nickpalladino.com. Thank you. Ryan Parker. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you BRZ for putting this together. I think Leopards is an amazing opportunity right now. I know a lot of people are talking about a lot of the challenges that we're going through and I think we do have to face it uh, head on. But also I think we have to address the core issue here. And when we're talking about issues of the downtown, people talk about safety. And I think we need to ensure that our police service not only have the financial uh, support, but also the moral support of council. In uh, times where people are kind of knocking the police, I think it's important that we stand behind our police. And also we have to have this opportunity to take care of the people that are at risk in our downtown. Uh, a lot of these people are dealing with um, addictions of all types. They're also dealing with disorders. And I think it's important that council have a caring mentality and working with these individuals. I encourage that our police service, as well as our provincial partners, that being both the province, but also, as well as the federal government, bring facilities such as intox and detox in the community. So this isn't an issue about arresting people or giving tickets. This is an issue of taking care of these people. So the only way we're gonna really help our downtown and capitalize on all the good things is to make sure we have services to take care of the people at risk. That would be the cornerstone if I was reelected. Thank you. Thank you. Harold Persif. Try that again. Thank you, Emily. My name is Harold Perversif. I'm a family man, been married for 47 years to my beautiful wife, Cheryl. We raised six children in this uh, community of Lethbridge and we are really family oriented in that respect. Uh, what does Harold Perversif know about the downtown businesses and the community? And the answer is a resounding loss. 
As an agent with the Revenue Canada Department in Lethbridge for nine years, I worked specifically downtown with uh, businesses. I got up and personal with them. Uh, I learned their challenges, some of their uh, goals, and I learned a lot about the issues that they had with respect to licensing, their high taxes, property taxes, and permits. Um, through that, I believe I have a good understanding of the way the businesses can be better accommodated from City Council. Further to that, in my retirement, I worked with the, Canada, with the um, security office as a uniform guard uh, in the downtown car for three years. And uh, my eyes were wide open uh, in that area, dealing with issues uh, day and night on the streets of uh, Lethbridge. And uh, once again, becoming very familiar with uh, things that go on. But on the other hand, there's a lot of positives. Thank you, Harold. <laughs> Your minute's up. But we look forward to hearing more from you. Uh, next up, Michael Petrakis. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for this opportunity. My name is Michael. To share just a little bit about myself, I was born in Greece. I've lived in Canada half my life, and I deeply love Lethbridge. And one of the reasons why I'm uh, stepping up for a candidate as city council is because, well, my life's work has brought me to this stage of my life where I've come to understand that everything I've been uh, studying and preparing in regards to what world peace looks like locally and how local community can actually be a shining example for the world is essentially my life's work. And I can see very clearly how we actually have all the solutions to all of our greatest challenges. If we can tap our collective intelligence by actually establishing compassionate public dialogue. I feel that's the greatest answer because we are our greatest resource. So thank you very much for this opportunity. And uh, I, in I invite you to vote with your heart. Thank you. Jen Prosser. Okay, and thank you so much for having me tonight. And I just wanna thank the BRZ for uh, putting this forum together in a safe way so that we can be together and hear from our candidates. My name is Jen Prosser, my pronouns are she, her, and I'm running to uh, be your city, of, your city councillor candidate uh, for voting on October 18th, because I be believe that we can build a stronger Lethbridge together. My work in community building has taken me all across Canada, Turtle Island, and I'm so honored to be back here in Lethbridge, making this place my home. And in the past two years during the pandemic, my work has really focused on how we can support one another, particularly through the online uh, community support circle group that I founded and co-administer. I'm really looking to bring solutions that lift people up. And that's what I believe that our city council needs to prioritize. Things like affordable childcare, affordable housing, immediate investments in transition housing to support folks where they're at with comprehensive supports and an investment in our transit. I have been door knocking all across Lethbridge and I've heard from folks and I know they want a community builder at the table. So October 18th, vote Jen Prosser. Thank you. Thank you. Jen Rempel-Schmidt. Oh, Jen Schmidt-Rempel, sorry. All good, Emily. Thank you very much for having me and thank you to the Downtown BRZ for putting this together tonight. My name is Jen Schmidt Rempel and I'm asking you to vote for me on October 18th. I'm running on a platform of four pillars. People, we need to ensure we're offering everyone a space to belong in our community. Service, there are some immediate challenges we're going to need to address and we're gonna to have to ensure our residents feel they're receiving good value for their tax dollars while still investing where we need to invest. Business, we need to continue to make Lethbridge an attractive place to do business and focus efforts on business recovery and economic development. Community, we need to continue to ensure our city is an attractive and healthy place for people to live, work, and play. I'm the former editor, owner, and publisher of Lethbridge Living Magazine, and during my time there, we told the stories of Lethbridge's downtown in every issue. My husband and I currently own three small franchise businesses one of those is located in downtown Lethbridge. So I know what it is to own a business in our city, in our city's downtown, and I know our city's stories. I understand the value of listening and hearing what people have to say. And I would ask you again to vote Jen Schmidt-Rempel on October 18th. 
Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Boyd Thomas. Hi, my name is Boyd Thomas. And uh, I first moved to Lethbridge in 1989. I came to college here. And uh, my wife and I were just recently married then, and that's uh, been 33 years ago. And now we have uh, adult children and grandchildren in the city here. There's been a lot of things that have been mentioned about public safety and economic development responsibility. And I agree with those platforms. I believe there are things that we do need to strengthen. The biggest issue for me is the affordable housing and what's happening with, uh, with that uh, particular topic. And uh, I do believe strongly that when we have a core housing need of 3,900 houses, that we need a comprehensive housing program that will take people right from social housing straight through to home ownership. This is something that I've been working with with the Aboriginal Housing Society as uh, executive director for the last uh, 13 years, and something I'm strongly going to be going forward to in, uh, in council to make sure that our people have a place to stay, therefore they can have jobs. Thank you. Thank you. Tim Vanderbeek. Hi, my name's Tim Vanderbeek. I have been involved in the community in a number of ways. Uh, through the Folk Museum, I was on the advisory committee and I helped that become a board. I was on the Lethbridge Sport Bed Committee and I helped create a sport council from that. And I've also served on the ATA in a number of one of the things that I have been able to do through my jobs as a parks worker, parks maintenance worker, and a substitute teacher is I get to hear all the different problems in town, and that has helped me greatly. And one of the things that we really need to do, going from my experience, is that we need to deal with the homelessness, the drug abuse, and the crime. I would hope that you can vote this coming up the coming dates and thank you for your time. Thank you. Robin Walker. Uh, okay, Tansi, bonjour, hello. Uh, thank you for hosting and for having me here tonight. Uh, my name is Robin Walker and running for the position of city council. Um, I was born in Calgary. I'm of Cree and Métis and Scandinavian descent. I was adopted, lived in the Crow's Nest Pass briefly, and I've lived here since preschool age. I love this city. I've lived, worked, volunteered uh, all over. Uh, I lived downtown actually during the, the year before and the year um, of the pandemic. And so I've seen a lot of what's been going on there firsthand. I've worked as a part-time taxi driver for, for many years now. So I've also experienced it that way. I've given a lot of these people rides to and from the, um, the former injection site when that was here and, and the shelter and, and other um, locations around the city. Um, I believe that uh, anything can be solved in community. So I think that we really want strong neighborhoods and downtown is of course our core neighborhood. And I love spending time downtown visiting the businesses there. And I see that, you know, them struggle over the past time. And so anything we can do as a mayor and council to help our community as a whole, I'm, I would like to be a part of that. Uh, I graduated from Lethbridge College and the University awesome. of Lethbridge. Thank you, Robin. Okay, thank you. you. Um, next up, we have Davey Wickers. Let's try that again. Um, hello, my name is Davey Wickers, and I'd like to earn your vote for position on Lethbridge City Council. I'm running for a number of reasons, but most fundamentally is my desire to use my talents to do my best for the citizens of Lethbridge, to listen and to advocate. I emigrated from the Netherlands with my family as a young man, falling in love with downtown Lethbridge, celebrating Alberta's 75th anniversary while we were on a family holiday. Lots has changed since then. Not many parents would feel comfortable today letting their young children walk downtown. Community safety is the item that concerns me most, not just for downtown, but for the entire city. And what does that look like? Restore the unconscionable cuts to the 2021 and 2022 police budget of a million dollars per year, then institute community policing. Create a loitering bylaw as precedented by other cities in Alberta, then enforce it. The watch is great. I think that should be enhanced with some beat cops. Get police back to policing duties and away from performing administration duties. That's not what they get paid for. 
Awesome. Doing advanced you, polls. Um, next, we'll move on to Ryan Wolf. Good evening, everybody. Thanks for being here. I'm going to take a little bit of a different tack here. Uh, I'm not going to tell you too much about what I think. I'm going to tell you about what the business, what the business owners downtown tell me when I go and interact with them and talk to them. Because really, that's my job as a councilman. My job will be to go and get information and understand the needs and the concerns and then to take those to council. And within a council, uh, come up with solutions that can work. And so what I've been told over and over again, every place I've been to, some of them which I have to buzz into to get into because people are so scared for their safety downtown, is that we don't have any champions right now and that uh, the complacency has basically made downtown a very, very difficult place awesome. for many people Thank to you, operate. Brian. And they're frustrated and they're tired and they want something to change. And so I want to be a part of that change. I've done what I've committed to do, which is to learn, listen, and lead. Now it's time to get back to business of getting businesses to prosper. When businesses prosper, we can help on the social end, which I want to make sure we do as well. Thank you, and vote for Ryan Wolf. Awesome, thanks. Um, and just a little hint for the candidates: if you open your chat um, function, which is on the bottom, you'll show it. It'll show up there on the right, and it'll um, help you count down the time you have left. Um, so now we're going to move into our first round of questions. We're going to start. It'll be in alphabetical order. Again, the questions have been randomized. Um, so it'll go through the same 10 questions, but it'll, who knows which um, question you'll get. Um, so the first Sorry, one- Emily, just to interrupt, you missed Chris Rowley. Oh, yes. Chris Rowley, um, go ahead. Um, so I am Chris Rowley. I've lived in Southern Alberta my whole life and I live in the downtown core and I work with Sage Clan on some of the issues that some of the other uh, candidates have talked about. I I visit a lot of the small businesses in the down, downtown core and really try to support them. And I, I would love to learn more about the issues of the small businesses in the downtown because part of my campaign is listening, not to come up with the solutions, but to hear the problems and collaborate with community on the solutions. And I am done. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry, we missed you, Chris. Um, now we will move into our first round of questions. Um, Kelty, what do you think is the municipality's role in fighting climate change? Thank you very much for the question. Um, so there's a number of things that the municipality can do when we take a look at climate change. A lot of it has to do with policies, procedures, bylaws, and zoning. Um, which is actually really boring policy talk, but it lays the foundations for what the city can and cannot do within our boundary. So everything as simple as reducing zoning code to allow for mixed commercial and residential neighborhoods that will increase walkability and bikeability, use of multimodal transportation and public transit is something that is very important for our, us to consider as a city moving forward. Also, we have to take a look at how people move around the city. So I'm very interested in investigating multimodal infrastructure, such as bike lanes and a connected network of walking and biking paths um, to encourage cycle use within the city and reduce our reliance on private vehicles. I'm also in interested in fully funding transit and um, helping people understand the transit system better and move it towards how they want to commute through the city. Thank you. Thank you. Marissa Black, what are your thoughts on the current issue of the police budget? Do you support reinstating the $1 million that was removed from their budget? Thank you so much for the question. Um, what I would support is looking overall at if that million dollars is going to be spent in an efficient way that is going to increase the ability of police to um, 
execute their job function. Uh, one thing that I would love to see in the police budget would be uh, more mental health aids. Uh, so when police officers are called out on domestic things or uh, disturbances, they would take someone or ideally they would be trained in de-escalation techniques uh, because I believe that a lot of the problems uh, that need to be solved are not done by incarcerating people, but rather getting them the tools they need to get to a place uh, that they're able to contribute to our society or just be able to uh, live a good quality of life. Thank you. Thank you. Mark Campbell, yes. if you were elected to city council, what reconciliation or indigenous priorities would you advocate for? Well, thank you very much for the question. Uh, I, it's been my honor to be on the uh, Truth and Reconciliation uh, Committee in the last uh, the last six months, and what a what an honor it is to be among those people. And uh, you just have to look at the website to see all of the different initiatives that are going forward with Truth and Reconciliation and uh, education. Uh, just recently, of course, we raised the Confederate flag, the Blackfoot Confederacy flag and the Truth and Reconciliation flag uh, as a permanent reminders. We need to find the truth. It was such an honor to, uh, to have one of the elders speak at a city council meeting to talk about what is the truth in Truth and Reconciliation and how, how important we have to find out what that truth is. And I, I believe that we can find it. We will continue with all of the many other platforms that we have. I, I really believe in a, a Blackfoot Center and that's sort of uh, coming up on the budgets uh, as, as we move forward. But uh, it is really, and not to mention that we have our memorandum of understanding with the Blackfoot Tribe, which is uh, Black uh, Council, which is uh, never never done before. So I look forward to working uh, in partnership with, with them. So really positive things moving forward. Thank you. Jeff Carlson, what do you consider to be the most pressing, pressing downtown concern that needs to be addressed? Thanks, Emily. Uh, I mean, I think there's a lot. I think probably the, uh, the one that floats to top of mind uh, in most conversations right now, I think we've already discussed it, is some of the social issues uh, downtown. And that I think um, not only top of mind, but it, it's very apparent um, that there are, are folks who are experiencing issues, addiction issues, homeless issues, uh, mental health issues. And they are in our downtown because that's where the majority of our services are. So I think that's probably the most pressing issue uh, that needs to be addressed by council. I think council actually did a lot uh, over the last uh, term in our uh, downtown clean and safe strategy. Pardon me, downtown clean and safe strategy. If you look through all those initiatives, uh, there are initiatives, uh, the watch, um, we talk about community policing uh, and providing the services to folks. Uh, meaningful daily activity, I think would go leaps and bounds. But if I get elected, one of the things I'll continue to focus on is getting people downtown through housing, through festivals, through uh, more business opportunities, because more folks downtown is more eyes downtown, and it alleviates a lot of the social ills. But I think that's probably the top of mind issue right now. Awesome. Thank you. Um, next up is Ben Christensen. Share your thoughts on public art and its role in our community. So... I've looked into this a little bit and I've had the privilege of attending some functions with the Southern Alberta Art Gallery and other um, arts and culture events in our community. Lethbridge is a very diverse community. We have a very prominent arts program at the University of Lethbridge as well as Lethbridge College. And I believe that our community needs to reflect that. Organizations like CASA play a big role in our arts community. And I believe that uh, the only thing missing right now in our community is a focus on the beautification of downtown and, and of course restoring that arts and culture community that's been lost because of the events that have transpired downtown from people not wanting to go there. And so we need to create an environment where people feel safe going back into downtown Lethbridge and ultimately creating an environment that's attractive once we reach that goal. And that includes uh, promoting arts, culture, and, and things in our city that are going to be attractive to tourism and to people in general in our city that want to just come and have a look at the beautiful things that we have to offer in downtown Lethbridge. Thank you. Belinda Croson, 
Current City Council has demonstrated their commitment to building a performing arts center in their most recent capital improvement program. Do you support this commitment and why? We know at some point we are going to need a performing arts center. It is vital to the development of the arts community, vital to the development of the tourism community, but it has to be balanced with all of our needs. Um, one of the things that we worked on in the last term was ensuring we got the project to a shovel ready place, which now permits us to look for other funding sources from private and from public funders. And that is what happened at CASA. When they did that project, they made sure that most of the funding came from outside the community. And that's what we'd be looking for with CASA as well. So it's how to balance it with all the needs, how to help make sure that we bring projects forward that um, are in the best interest of the community with the best funding possible. Absolutely, I support a performing arts centre. The uh, question, of course, is how to achieve it and to make sure it's financially sensible when we do. Thank you. Rako Rako Dodik, what are your ideas to revitalize downtown? <laughs> Well, that's the that's the entire uh, forum, isn't it? Really? Um, uh, well, there, there's a couple things. We got a bit of a problem because right now uh, a lot of people aren't going downtown because big box stores and of course the uh, online shopping that's uh, going on. So the way to attract people down there uh, downtown is to ensure that they have uh, accessibility to parking. Parking meters right now really, uh, they don't bring a lot of money into the city coffers. And I think uh, bearing in mind that big box stores have free parking, at least downtown should have as well. And the problem, of course, as it's been alluded to before, is the, uh, the the folks downtown who, through no fault of their own, are either homeless, addicted, uh, alcoholics, uh, and they create a problem that uh, needs to be addressed. It's not just a police presence that needs to be there, but other security personnel as well. So what you want, what you need to do is to have some sort of security presence there to ensure that bad behavior uh, doesn't uh, occur right in front of your eyes. Thank you. Thank you. Jerry Firth, how are you going to support sustainable and environmental living in Lethbridge? Thank you for the question, Emily. I think this is something that is really important that we're all addressing right now with the heightened uh, climate change that's affecting us globally. This is something that we can do in our very uh, own yards and in our own community. And climate change is not this global effort. It is starting from within the municipality, within, within the community itself. Uh, the city is already moving towards providing opportunities with uh, good waste management, recycling programs, and are looking at the green bins for compost. Uh, I think that's an important step that we can take um, and to continue to contribute to where we can within our own spaces. Uh, there are op opportunities and options for people to zero escape their, their properties so that we can reduce the consumption of water. Uh, I think it's uh, incumbent upon us as individuals, but it's important then, of course, for the city to provide good public service to help those who may not have the capacity to do it solely on their own. And uh, I appreciate the opportunity to share. Thank you. Thank you. Bill Ginther. What are your ideas for addressing the social issues in Lethbridge and downtown? Well, uh, first of all, thank you for the for the question, Emily. Um, th th there's a lot of different things that we can do. Uh, one of the things that we need to address is uh, the issue of people hanging around downtown. Uh, and of course, as I said earlier, as the director of the soup kitchen, I see a lot of the uh, uh, I'll refer to them as the social ills. One of the issues that I continue to see over and over again on a daily basis is that people have nothing to do, they have no place to go. So one of the things that we need to work really hard at is finding meaningful activity for people, those that you know have nothing to do. And we need to make sure that they have a place to go. Secondly, we need to make sure that we have proper services for people. We need to make sure that we have um, um, housing for people, which uh, is lacking sorely. Uh, and I think one of the things that we need to be more creative and how we provide that housing and not just go with what uh, the standard has been. We need to look closely at what other cities are doing, learn from them, and we don't need to reinvent the, pardon me, reinvent the wheel, but we need to make sure that we follow uh, good practices elsewhere and introduce them into our city. Thank you. Thank you. Zachary Hampton, what role does the municipality play in fighting COVID-19? Thank you, Emily. Obviously, we're in the, the in the fourth wave of the, of the pandemic here, and uh, yeah, it's it's good to finally see uh, 
so a little bit of leadership from the province. It's uh, it's obviously been quite contentious as we've been going along. And I think no matter what side of the political spectrum you're on, you're on uh, there's been a certain level of disappointment there. But as for the municipality, I see a lot of the response for COVID-19 falling directly into the province's hands. Obviously, we need to step up and, and support and protect our citizens and businesses as called upon. But at the same time, we also need to acknowledge we can't be treading in again against any provincial recommendations. Obviously those all fall to the chief medical officer of health. And we wanna make sure we're in line with the province and uh, that we can keep a similar, similar, a similar line of messaging, as well as making sure that anything that we were to do bylaws or otherwise is enforceable at the end of the day. Thank you very much. Thank you. Dale Lear, what are your ideas to revitalize downtown? Well, I guess with any um, problem solving, the first thing I think you need to do is identify what is the outcome that we're trying to achieve. So revitalization means a number of different things to different people, but at the very least, we have to deal with the social problems that face us. The comment is brought up before about people who hang around and don't have any place to go during the day. That needs to be addressed immediately. And when you have a house on fire, you don't worry how it started. You deal with the problem as it is and then get to longer term solutions later. Um, but again, when we talk about revitalization, are we talking from a physical point of view? Because we have some structural challenges down there architecturally it's not the most attractive place we have a mix of business uses including things like financial institutions um, educational institutions so forth that don't lend themselves to a very friendly street presence so we need to first of all identify what is the outcome that we want to achieve make a plan to get there and then work it thank you ryan lebko if you were elected to city council what reconciliation or indigenous priorities would you advocate You know, I commend federal, provincial, and municipal governments, uh, what they've done um, and what they can do going forward. Uh, I believe we need to have a strong voice on council to address indigenous issues and the root causes. And I spent my truth and reconciliation day um, reading about the Indian Act. And the Indian Act is still uh, in effect today. And, and that is the, uh, the root cause of colonialism and, uh, and many of the issues that the native people face today, as well as the land claims that have been going on for decades that uh, the federal government has put uh, roadblocks up on. And until those are dealt with and addressed, you know, starting at a municipal, provincial level, you know what, maybe the federal government uh, can start really enacting change and, uh, you know what, getting rid of the Indian Act and uh, finally setting these land claims. Thank you. Darcy Logan, what do you think is the municipality's role in fighting climate change? I think we got to look at definitely um, as capital projects go ahead, we need to have consultation with experts about green initiatives as we start to implement those. Um, recycling is also important. Um, I'd love to even see a, a, an increase to our, our waste and recycling facilities. I look at some of the other places in the province that have uh, done a really remarkable job um, in that capacity. So the city definitely has a role to play and uh, I would advocate strongly for uh, more green initiatives. Thanks. Thank you. Shelby McLeod, what are your ideas for addressing the social issues in Lethbridge and downtown? Well, social issues are always a problem. We've had social issues in society for time immemorial. Um, I think that they've become concentrated for several reasons. Uh, drug dealers is a, one of the biggest problems. I mean, we talk about the person who's using the drug and I don't think anyone in that downtown core is not to be rude, but smart enough to make the drug. So someone brings it to themselves that it's a cycle of downward spiral. So, um, to change the down co downtown core, the roads haven't helped. I hardly go downtown, to be honest with you, because uh, not that I'm afraid, and, and I've never been afraid to, to be in the downtown core. Uh, I think that we, once the roads are done and new businesses come in, because not to be rude, my bank left downtown, I, I and with automation, you just don't shop like you used to. So I think we can work collaboratively together with all the different agencies 
And the Sage clan, I think, is, is making great inroads. And I give them full marks for trying to help their people. And um, we just have to work together. Awesome. Thank you. John Middleton Hope, share your thoughts on public art and its role in our community. <laughs> Well, of course, I've got a, a plethora of background in, in the arts, but at the end of the day, when I walk around downtown, I see uh, public art on the side of buildings. And what I really like about it is that it is uh, it just often displays historical images. Um, I'm a bit of a history buff, not quite what uh, Belinda is, but I have a, a, quite an interest in, in history. And I like to look at the scapes that we see on the sides of buildings downtown. So that's, for me, that's a that's a really important um, examination of how downtown can grow and how the downtown area uh, actually can be improved and, and be more uh, appealing to, uh, to the general population. Um, I think uh, public art really has the opportunity to enhance the downtown uh, community and, uh, and the downtown core. And uh, I'd like to see that along with the restoration of some of our older buildings and recognizing that, of course, many of these older buildings are, are not in conditions that can be reclaimed or, or renovated. But I really do enjoy looking at the old brick and how it's being uh, reused or repurposed for not only artistic, but practical purposes as well. Thank you. Thank you. Nick Palladino, how are you going to support sustainable and environmental living in Lethbridge? Thanks for that question, a tough one. Um, I think you could start at City Hall and um, um, encourage developers to, uh, to build sustainable uh, places and um, through zoning changes and things like that. Um, um, I think that's all I can add to that. Thank you. Ryan Parker. Current City Council has demonstrated their commitment to building a performing arts center in their most recent capital improvement program. Do you support this commitment and why? Well, I think it's important to realize there's limited amount of funds that we have as a municipality. At a cost of $138 million, which was, is a projected cost, there's no way that we could pay for that on the local tax base. I think what they need to do is get it to a point of being shovel ready and they've done an amazing job. But then at that point, we need to leverage both provincial and federal funds to help make it occur. And also, I think that the Performing Arts Committee also has a role in to do some fundraising to find a way that not only when it is built, that it can be operated in a cost neutral basis. So it isn't on the backs of the local tax dollars. I can't see it happening quickly, but I think it's important. But at the same time, there's no way that the local tax dollars can pay for something at that scale. Thank you. Thank you. Harold Perversive. What role does the municipality play in fighting COVID-19? Thank you for the question there, Emily. So certainly we're uh, in the midst of the fourth wave of this uh, pandemic, and there's been direction, uh, positive direction, I believe, from the provincial government and followed on the heels from uh, federal as well. So we have to be in communication. We have to be cognizant of uh, what we can do as a municipality. One of the big things that I believe is important is to ensure that when we have a bylaw, for example, the masking bylaw, with the uh, restaurants and the businesses that uh, are requiring uh, passports or uh, proof of uh, COVID, that those things are real and that they're, that they're being followed. And there has to be something in place, a check and balance to ensure that we play our role to keep this pandemic at the, at the minimum. And I believe that's where we have to do. It's communication, enforcement if need be, but most of all, public awareness. Let the people know what's going on. And I believe our city council has been doing a good job in that respect, and I would continue to do that myself. So thank you for the question. Thank you. Michael Petrakis, what do you consider to be the most pressing downtown concern that needs to be addressed? Thank you for the question. I'd say that the same issue that uh, is at the, at, the, at the crux of all of our issues is at the crux of the downtown issue. And that's that we need to set the stage for a dialogue to occur that invites all stakeholders to the table, including those who are enmeshed in the issue of downtown itself for example, poverty and addiction. 
So to bring together everyone that is involved so as to honor the fact that their experiential wisdom matters and a continuity of dialogue is what will ensure that we get to the bottom of the issue. One of my favorite indigenous quotes is when our people gather, we speak until the truth is self-evident. Thank you. Thank you. Jen Prosser, what are your ideas for addressing the social issues in Lethbridge and downtown? Thank you so much. Uh, so I, I want to just start by redefining the term social issues, because really I see this as an economic justice issue for folks who are struggling to make ends meet, folks who are struggling with food insecurity and housing insecurity. This is about economic justice, which is why we need as a city council to uh, prioritize funding and supporting affordable housing projects, as well as working together in collaboration with the amazing social agencies that we have throughout the city that provide frontline services uh, to open a daytime space. So that there, are, there are somewhere where folks to go, uh, whether it's too hot, too cold, raining, snowing, what have you. But really this is about economic justice, which means meeting our basic needs. Everyone has the right to food security and everyone has the right to housing security. And as a city, we need to work together to make sure that anybody can access that with the supports that they need on site to meet their needs every day and as they build further and further in their lives. Thank you. Thank you. Chris Rowley, what are your thoughts on the current issue of the police budget? Do you support reinstating the $1 million that was removed from their budget? Uh, yes, I do. And I, I believe that the police need more training around mental health as well with that budget increase again. And it's partly because what I see happening is a lot of people go in and out of prison that need mental health help. And so they're not getting it in prison. So if we could stop them from going to prison and have that, that money to train police or even have uh, uh, some mental health or people with psychology going with the police because other cities have done that and can assess right on the spot whether they need to go to jail or they need to be in a hospital. And so that is my response. Thank you. Thank you. Jen schmidt Rempel. How are you going to support sustainable and environmental living in Lethbridge? So I think that what we need to look at first is um, think globally, act locally. I, I know we hear that a lot, but that's, that's what I think we need to look at. And it's the best way to approach um, the sustainability. I agree with previous council's decision to reduce uh, corporate emissions. The new municipal development plan includes several policies that strive to reduce our footprint, lower GHGs, and provide incentives on resource efficiency and renewable energy projects. Um, I support these policies and they do further help reduce emissions and create environmental and fiscal sustainability. The environment supports society and society supports our economy. If you want a strong economy, you need a strong society, which is supported by a strong and healthy environment. This, this aligns with all four pillars of my platform that's available on my website, jenschmittrempel.ca. Um, council policies focused on the economy need to address the environment and society. My platform, sorry, I got distracted by the chat. My platform includes policies aimed at improving multimodal transportation, protecting our urban forests, creating opportunities for new sustainable uh, bio and energy technologies. And thank you very much. Thank you. Boyd Thomas, current city council has demonstrated their commitment to building a performing arts center in their most recent capital improvement program. Do you support this commitment and why? Performing arts is something that I was involved in not as a hobby when I was growing up, and I have done. I've, I've been involved in some uh, as, as an extra in motion pictures that have been done around the area. So I think there's there's a viability for that. However, I have to echo that some of the things that we're dealing with in this city, uh, some of the associations such as affordable housing, are things that are very important to the lives of people uh, that would otherwise love to be able to enjoy. But at the same time, there has to be a priority of putting people in the homes. Uh, 100, $138 million for a uh, performing arts building uh, is, is a huge amount of money and the amount of houses that we could build with that uh, in, in all forms of housing from uh, social to uh, even uh, home ownership uh, programs would be substantial. 
the thing about uh, people being placed in the houses is they get a chance to heal. And when they get a chance to heal, they're able to find employment, they're able to get an education, they're able to advance in, in some of the personal goals they have, both as development as family, and as, as well as to add the economic development of the, of the city. So I would have to say, I'd have to sum it up and say like this, there are things that are needed and things that are useful. And the things that are needed are useful, but sometimes the things that are useful are not necessarily needed. I would have to echo what Ryan said, that I would be in favor. Sorry, thank you, Boyd. Um, <coughs> um, on to Tim Vanderbeek. What do you consider to be the most pressing downtown concern that needs to be addressed? I believe that the most pressing downtown issue right now is the homelessness, the crime, and the drug addiction. And to address that, what I believe you need to do is develop a coordinated and integrated plan where when you've got somebody at the SCS, they're evaluated, they're placed into housing, when they're ready to go from housing, when they're ready to go to drug addiction treatment, they can be put placed into there because it's only when the addict is willing and believes that they can actually change that that treatment will be effective. Thank you. Thank you. Robin Walker, what are your thoughts on the current issue of the police budget? Do you support reinstating the $1 million that was removed from their budget? Thank you for the question. Um, I, I'd have to echo Chris Rowley in the sense that if we were to reinstate the budget, that it would definitely go towards some retraining. Um, you know, recent articles and, and other issues that have been brought to light about uh, cultural issues on the force. And I think those need to be addressed before we just go ahead and, and approve any sort of budget. So to look at what they would do with the money and how that would affect um, the way that they deal with these issues going forward. And, and also looking at coordinated responses with mental health and um, social work professionals. Thank you, that's my response. Thank you. I will move on to Davey Wiggers. Share your thoughts on public art and its role in our community. One thing that um, that I've loved about uh, public art is it creates uh, opportunities for introspection. Um, most notably, what uh, um, to um, um, take a page uh, from from John, I believe, is that um, the cultural representations um, in in some of the murals and that sort of thing really lean into um, the our history and the culture of the area. Um, that gives you a time to review, um, you know, it contributes to, uh, to uh, reconciliation. If you understand a, uh, a, a different culture from what you're, uh, what you're grown with, um, it allows you to be um, more compassionate. Also, um, um, these things um, help to distract you from issues you might be facing in every day and help with problem solving. Um, sometimes uh, it, all that's required is a fresh perspective. Thank you. Thank you. Ryan Wolf, what are your ideas for addressing social issues in Lethbridge and our downtown? You're just muted still. <laughs> So what I learned when I went out to Medicine Hat to speak with homelessness coordinators, they obviously have quite a uh, renowned program there, is they do a very good job at intake and understanding the differences within their homeless population. Within the population, we just kind of, you know, clump them into they're all addicts, they're all homeless, they're, they all have mental health needs. The medicine hat does an excellent job of determining where they are in life, what they're struggling with, and how they can be helped. And so, uh, Thank you. Um, we'll now take a five minute break. We'll just kind of re.
Uh, sorry, we're just going to take a quick five minute break and we will reconvene at 8.11 to go round two. Thank you. All right, let's get back to it. Um, so again, for the second round here, it has been 
um, randomized both in questions and in council candidates. So our first candidate that's up will be Reiko Dojic. And your question is, what role does the Lethbridge Police Services and its affiliated programs, such as the Watch, play in addressing the social issues in Lethbridge, and how would you continue to support or change these programs? Well, the first uh, part uh, to my answer is uh, just uh, referring back to the uh, police budget that was uh, reduced. Uh, the police need a predict. Uh, a predictable funding model. So if they have uh, their operating budget approved at X amount, uh, they then plan based on receiving X amount. And then all of a sudden, if you somewhere down the line reduce it uh, for whatever reason, they then have to quickly uh, figure out how they're going to address whatever the initiatives they had with much less uh, less money. So uh, the reality is that downtown needs a, a, a really large presence of some sort of security uh, personnel. It doesn't have to be necessarily police. It could be other forms, peace officers, the watch program and things like that. Because once you actually have some sort of presence on the street that people know that if they do a negative behavior or act out that there are going to be consequences for it. People want to come downtown and make sure that they're not being hassled, whether it be panhandling or uh, any other negative behavior. And the only way to do that is somehow uh, make sure that uh, people that are exhibiting ne negative behavior just stop doing it. And you really need some sort of security presence. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, we have Darcy Logan. What does being fiscally responsible mean to you? Fiscally responsible? Well, that's ultimately the city is a municipal corporation and council is ostensibly the board of directors. So we have to be transparent in the decisions that we're making and that's being accountable in terms of dollars spent and uh, just being quite clear with uh, all the stakeholders as well, inviting them into the conversations, uh, consulting them, and uh, ultimately being answerable for the decisions that we make. Thank you. Zachary Hampton. What role does downtown play in our city and how would you support downtown if you were elected? Well, I, I think being lost in all of this, you know, we talk about the problems downtown, but downtown is, is actually a huge selling point. We obviously have uh, like Festival Square coming up and we have so many of our best local businesses downtown. And that is, it's a huge selling point to have so many of our, our local shops or local vendors or local restaurants all gathered in one area. And we should be marketing that city the best, uh, that part of the city the best we can. Because even in light of its, of its problems, when any city that's got tons of foot traffic downtown is a thriving city. So if elected, my, I, I would do my best to try and make sure that downtown's not only safe, but it's also uh, practical in terms of parking and other things like that. But also just making sure we're listening to the business owners and making sure that if they're communicating that they need something, that we're going out and that we're actually doing it. Thank you. Kelty Baird, how would you support small business if elected to council? So that's a great question. Um, I myself am a small business owner as well. And so I have a lot of different ideas around how city council can support small businesses. One of the biggest things is actually something I'm already working on in my uh, dis business district, which is just outside the downtown core. And myself and some other business owners are investigating trying to start a BRA or sorry, a BIA or a BRZ in our area, um, which would work to promote the area as well. So I think one of the biggest things the city council can do is kind of motivate other businesses to create these districts and co-market together and make it easy and streamlined for businesses not only to set up, but to continue operating in the city as a whole. Thanks. Thank you. Jerry Firth. What role does the Lethbridge Police Service and its affiliated programs such as the Watch play in addressing the social issues in Lethbridge and how would you continue to support or change these programs? Thank you for the question, Emily. I think that it's important that we look at the system holistically. Uh, yes, the police and its affiliated uh, watch program play a role when it comes to policing and security. We also need to remember what 
police, the police role is within our society. And it's the police laws and bylaws. Uh, it is not to address all of our social needs and social issues. It's important that we are able to come uh, forward with comprehensive uh, and collective approaches. And I would echo some of the previous conversations about uh, if we're going to be working from the policing position, we also need to make sure that they are well trained and equipped in mental health supports as long as well as having those professionals working alongside them within uh, their capacity in addressing the social issues in the downtown core. Thank you. Thank you. Michael Petrakis, what role does the city and city council play in bringing public art to Lethbridge? Well, uh, as one of my main uh, platforms is to establish a subcommittee to the city council uh, devoted to World Peace Council. And one of the main focuses is world peace art. Uh, my favorite quote, one of my favorite quotes is, the purpose of revolutionary art is to make revolution irresistible. So what we wish to inspire within the community can be seated in the art that we promote. Um, and, that, and that means art from an architectural perspective, as well as art from paintings, murals, uh, the beautification of our downtown area is really fundamental. And art also is a, as a form of radical expression as well, which is to give the voice to the people so that there's public spaces where dialogue, philosophy, um, and self-expression are nurtured. Thank you. John Middleton Hope. What does being fiscally responsible mean to you? Good question. Fiscally responsible to me means ensuring that the corporation examines on a continuous basis uh, its efficiencies uh, and ensures that wherever possible efficiencies are examined to ensure that the mill rate stable, that sorry, the mill rate uh, is not increased and taxation is not uh, unnecessarily increased. People, as I've uh, traveled around the city and talked with a number of people, uh, a couple of issues stand out. One obviously is public safety. The second is about taxation. What are we as the city council prepared to do with taxation? The issue is, is a very complex one and we want services as citizens and we expect a great deal of services for the money that we pay. Uh, at the end of the day, we're going to have to make some very difficult decisions as funding from various levels of government decrease. We're going to have to, as a city council, make some very difficult decisions, which are going to have to focus on our needs versus our wants, first and foremost. Thanks. Thank you. Next up is Jen Prosser. If you were to elected to city council, what reconciliation or Indigenous priorities would you advocate for? Thank you so much. Um, so we've elected, you know, reconciliation, truth and reconciliation process, the inquiry uh, on the um, the residential schools, uh, as well as the inquiry into missing and murdered Indigenous women, girls, and two spirit folks, and the calls to action need to be centered in our planning as a comprehensive, holistic purpose. We can't make decisions and then review them later to see if they match those calls to action. Councillors need to understand that as a political entity, which city council is, and also working with our partners in the nation to nation approach, the Métis Council, our neighbors, Kainai, Pakani, as well as working with Indigenous leaders. And I believe what's really key here is making sure that we have folks at the table who represent uh, different communities in Lethbridge. So when it comes to truth and reconciliation, when it comes to the calls to justice for justice from the Missing and Murdered Women and Girls report, that means having people at the table in positions of power to work together to make choices that are going to further that, that and work on those calls to action. Thank you. Next, we have Mark Campbell. What role does downtown play in our city and how would you support downtown if you were elected? What role does downtown have? Okay, well, downtown is the heart of the city. That's uh, without a doubt, uh, the heart of the city. When you have the heart of the city going, you have vibrancy, you have uh, 
the core of what uh, the essence of what Lethbridge is. So, um, and we've we've done so many things in in my time, and it was an honor to be on the heart of the city committee as well. Again, I, I bring bring back the Third Avenue project. Uh, I bring back uh, the the trip program that brought in uh, some wonderful renovations. I think of the Oliver Building downtown, creating that vibrancy that. Uh, the, the new businesses that happen downtown. Uh, I think of the post office building and, and the new, uh, the, the new uh, medical building that's downtown, the park and ride. These are all things that are just starting to get going and starting to create more and more activity into the downtown. So well, the downtown is, is, is an amazing place. Festival Square is happening, COVID goes away. We're gonna get these new festivals that are coming into, the, into Gulf Gardens. Uh, I just see the potential of downtown being a walkable, livable, uh, and also throw in a, a few new new uh, houses to live or uh, apartments to live. Man, we've got a we've got a place. We've got to tell the world that Lethbridge is alive and ready for you. Thank you. Next up, we have Ryan Parker. How would you support small business if elected to council? Well, I think we continually do what we're doing, and if you think about it, council's role is very limited. You know, we're, we're elected to take care of roads, transit, pools, ice rinks, uh, our parks and protect our coolies. Our job is just to create an environment where people want to open small business in our community. I don't think we can go out there and make promises to the small business because you're also doing that to a disservice to the other businesses in our community. All you can do is really create a community where people want to move here or they want to invest in their own business because this is where they want to thrive. This is where they want to grow. Remember, council doesn't have a magic wand and we can't give tax breaks to each and every one. Those are false promises. But what we can do is create a community where people want to come, create a business, and then help it grow and prosper. At the end of the day, that's all a council can do. Otherwise, we're just leaving a mixed message. Thank you. Thank you. Shelby McLeod. What role does the city and city council play in bringing public art to Lethbridge? Well, pub public art can be uh, anything that is going to be on public display. Now, the city can uh, have a competition. They can fund it. They can get uh, an agency from outside the community to bring public art. Uh, if we look at uh, on uh, Mammograph Drive, we have the gifts that came from our sister city in Quebec. And uh, I, the, I forgot the name of the uh, ball and chain that's blowing in the wind. That was really controversial once upon a time. And now we just, uh, we have a lot of art and we need to have, I think we need to have an art walk uh, from your vehicle. So that as you drive by, you can say like a bingo card, check it off and say, I saw that, I saw this and, and, and know the names of the various art and the artists. So uh, Lethbridge is a, a wealth of art and it's a great community that we need to uh, show what we have to a better uh, level. Thank you. Marissa Black. What role does downtown play in our city and how would you support downtown if you were elected? Thank you so much for the question. I think downtown is host to a lot of our local businesses and local business owners are the people who live in our city, who raise their families in our city and are so important vitally to our economic function of the city. So it's so important for us to support businesses who are downtown and also supporting our new festival square. Uh, that could be a great economic driver. Uh, lots of people currently drive to Calgary to go to music festivals, um, different kind of festivities. Uh, so we could certainly bring some people to Lethbridge uh, with the works that are going on. Another area that I'm very focused on is trying to get accessibility uh, increased in all everything that we do. So I would love to see, <laughs> I would love to see more um, accessible services in our downtown as well. Thank you. Thank you. Tim Vanderbeek, how would you support small business if elected to council? Well, we can do a number of things because I know COVID's hit a lot of business right now. So I think I'm, we're looking at maybe taking a look at some kind of rate breaks. Uh, taking a look at maybe some kind of tax break for different businesses like restaurants and hairdressers and gyms, think of businesses like that, that were forced to close and were facing major or major troubles trying to stay open. 
Thank you. Thank you. Boyd Thomas, what does being fiscally responsible mean to you? Fiscally responsible means not overspending. It means you've got a budget, you have to stay within your budget. If things happen, you have to adjust for that. And you have to really take a look at what is really needed and focus on that. Um, I run a nonprofit organization and I don't get any kind of operational dollars or any kind of funding uh, from, uh, from outside government to do that. And I have to be able to take a look at what's happening, what needs to be done and uh, plan accordingly. If something does happen, I have to adjust. I think that's the same thing we have to do at the city. I'm concerned with, our, with what's happened with the taxes where our, our, our tax rate has grown exponentially over our, our growth rate. And that's something I don't understand why that is. And I would like to find out what it is and then be able to put a break on that so that we can see what can we do to invest? What can we do to create revenue? And how can we be responsible with the money that, that we receive as tax revenue to benefit the people in the city? Thank you. Bill Ginther, how are you going to support sustainable and environmental living in Lethbridge? Well, one of the first things we need to do is uh, is to look at ourselves and to see what are we doing to make sure that we are living in a way that doesn't contribute to some of the issues that we face in terms of, of, of sustainability. I think we need to be very careful in terms of housing. We need to make sure we, we build with, with uh, reusable materials. We need to make sure that we build in a way that uh, doesn't create a large carbon footprint. Uh, we need to make sure that we focus a bit more on this solar energy. When you think about the amount of sunshine we have here, we need to make it more affordable than it is now. I've often heard that it'll take up to 20 years to re recover uh, if you uh, put, put together a solar panel system for your home. I think we need to find ways of making that more affordable. Uh, we, we see a lot of wind energy here as well, and we I think we can harness that within our city. So I think overall, we need to start with ourselves and to say, what are we doing to contribute and how can we um, encourage others to do the same? Thank you. Thank you. Ben Christensen, what does being fiscally responsible mean to you? But that is an excellent question. And uh, I'd like to shed some light on that. So throughout the campaign process, we see a lot of uh, financial spending from candidates on unnecessary expenditures. And to me, that shows uh, in part during the campaign process, a lot of our fiscal habits and so fiscal responsibility means not only managing public resources in a, in a smart and efficient way, but also showing during that campaign period that we're capable of that. And so in, in, short, fiscal, in short, fiscal responsibility simply means that we are not going to make decisions that are irresponsible, that are going to burden or cause more problems for the taxpayer. And we're going to use those funds that we have responsibly to ensure a better future for our community. Thank you. Dale Lear, what role does downtown play in our city and how would you support downtown if you were elected? Well, the downtown is one of the unique and historical features of Lethbridge. And so in that way, it can become a tourist draw. Uh, what I think we really lack for the downtown is a vision. So as a result, we get some competing ideas about what should be and could be done down there. Um, one of the most important aspects of it, I think that can be developed is the Galt Gardens. And I, every time I go to Edmonton, I always go and visit the Mutart Conservatory. And I've often thought, wouldn't it be cool if we had a place like that downtown where people could go year round and enjoy uh, different environments. And uh, that would make it a draw for families. Now, the issue, of course, is how do you pay for that? And that's where I think we need to be a little more creative. We need to look to philanthropists, uh, corporate donors, user pay models, um, beyond just the usual raising taxes and grants. So uh, growing the economy is ultimately the way we can have all those nice things and make them affordable. Thank you. Thank you. Nick Palladino. How would you support small business if elected to council? Uh, he might not be here anymore. Um, we'll just move on then to Jen Schmidt-Rempel. 
What role does the city and city council play in bringing public art to Lethbridge? Thank you very much for your question. Um, public art is, is something that I've been watching for a long time as the past president of the Allied Arts Council. Um, right now, the city and city council does have a public art committee composed of a variety of members of the public. They evaluate projects as they come up and they select um, different types of art that are coming to the city. Now, it is um, public arts important to our city and we need to keep it as part of different building expenditures, even though it does add some pricing to some of our building costs. It's one of those things that builds uh, vi vibrancy in our whole community and it certainly makes our city a more attractive place to live work and play that's a large part of our community and certainly it falls under my community pillar and i would invite you to take a look at that thank you davy wiggers what role does the lethbridge police service and its affiliated programs such as the watch play in addressing the social issues in lethbridge and how would you continue to support or change these programs I did mention earlier, um, I think the watch is a great program. Um, however, um, when I um, participated in the, the grand parade at the Lethbridge uh, um, Senior Citizens Association, um, there was a, um, a, a gentleman uh, wrapped up in a blanket um, in the middle of the um, athletic oval. Um, the watch came, said hello, gave him a card, walked away. Um, you know, it's, it, it's a great program, but uh, one without teeth and, um, um, perhaps a, uh, a watch patrol with a, uh, a, a police officer empowered to actually take action, uh, because we can have, uh, beautiful public art downtown, wonderfully remodeled, uh, streets and, uh, um, and old buildings, etc. But if um, if an interview uh, for a potential uh, executive director for the Southern Alberta Art Gallery is interrupted by somebody urinating on the window outside the interview area, I think there's something wrong. And um, enough with the platitudes. Um, we need action, and awesome. Thank uh, you, I would support them. Next, we'll move on to Ryan Lepko. How are you going to support sustainable and environmental living in Lethbridge? Um, ultimately, I think that's up to the, uh, you know, the individual. We have a tremendous uh, roadways, pa uh, pathways. I, I bike to and from work uh, every day. And uh, I've done that choice to um, be healthy and uh, pollute less. Um, but I'm also not the belief of, you know, if you build it, they will come. Uh, I do not uh, believe in the, uh, the um, uh, bike pass that, are, that, you know, may alter the roadways. Um, you know, I, you know I, I believe it's up to each individual person and, uh, and uh, how they want to address that in their own life. Thank you. Belinda Croson, if you were elected to city council, what reconciliation or Indigenous priorities would you advocate for? There are so many we need to work on, but one of the things we continually hear from the Indigenous and Métis community is no more tokenism. We need to look at things like employment. We need to look at housing. We need to ensure that Indigenous voices are heard. Um, and that means looking at our governance models. That means looking at the resources we have working with the Indigenous community. So we have to go beyond platitudes. We have to go beyond just saying land acknowledgements and actually making significant changes, working with uh, the Indigenous community here in Lethbridge, also with Chief and Council. And it is time that we actually see real change made. And that does mean addressing the truth of our history, addressing racism, addressing uh, the treatment of Indigenous women in Lethbridge, and all of those things as a community has to be done and is something that City Council needs to lead. Thank you. Jeff Carlson. Current City Council has demonstrated their commitment to building a performing arts centre in their most recent capital improvement plan. Do you support this commitment and why? Uh, thanks for the question, Emily. Um, I, I do support a performing arts centre. I think our community does. It, uh, 
it was top of uh, our uh, recreation and culture master planning along with the the leisure center for I think 20 years. The last time we built a performing arts center in Lethbridge, and I know this because I'm the same age, was 1967. Um, our community has grown by leaps and bounds uh, since then. And in order to get the, the space for new, exciting uh, theater, uh, arts, dance in, in Lethbridge, we're gonna need better spaces and more spaces. The challenge is funding. Uh, when I first started working on this project, it was $45 million. It's ballooned to over $100 million. We can't afford that on our local tax base. So it's going to be a lot of advocacy work, working with our partners in the province and the federal government to get those dollars into our community. It's, it's a long-term project, but it needs to be on our capital list in order for it to become reality. If you look at something like the Exhibition Evolution Project, that was on our list forever, and we finally found the dollars for it. The performing arts is, is no different. It's on our list. It's unfunded. It's the challenge of city council. Thank you, Jeff. Oh. Appreciate okay. it. <laughs> I'll move on to Ryan Wolf. How would you support small business if elected to council? Okay, well, hopefully everybody can hear me. I apologize if the other two responses you couldn't hear. Uh, do you want to give me the question once more, please? Oh, okay. For sure. How would you support small business elected to council? I would get the hell out of their way. Um, you've got a lot of very smart people running businesses downtown, and they have expressed to me over and over again that there's way too much red tape, they, we, they perceive City Hall as an obstacle for them to do business. We, we have businesses who want to go and do a sidewalk sale at Galt Gardens during the day, and they won't do it because we are going to charge them a permit fee. So why? Why would we charge them a fee? Let them go there, dispatch a couple of red shirt folks, and let them have a great day and bring people downtown to support downtown. We have people developing the Oliver building. We've got all this stuff going on. They need us to facilitate. They don't need us to do any of the work. Really, they can do it. They're better at it than we are. Thank you. Thanks. Harold Persever, sorry. What does being fiscally responsible mean to you? Fiscally responsibility is a major part of my campaign platform. Accountability, restraints, and due diligence. I'll be a member of council with uh, eight other colleagues uh, on council. And when we have a project before us or a expenditure there, it's important to research all avenues in respect. You can't go spending the dime when there's a nickel in the bank. And you know the tax and spend, spend and tax scenario that we've been experiencing has driven Lethbridge up to having one of the highest bases of taxation within the province of Alberta, second only to Grand Prairie. And this has been an ongoing issue. That's what I feel is most important in uh, sustainability and accountability is watching the budget, watching the expenditures and being responsible fiscally in all respects. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, Robin Walker, what are your ideas for addressing the social issues in Lethbridge and downtown? Thank you for the question. Um, I think, you know, one would be to, to get to know these people and, you know, what issues they're dealing with directly, because we, we need to get to the, the source of the problem. And so if we're just treating everyone as numbers, we're not going to get to know, you know, their specific situation and how to help them out. Um, and then I think also looking at some best practices. So, you know, if we find that there is a high proportion of Indigenous people, then maybe an Indigenous-led solution uh, or, or partnering with Indigenous organizations um, to come to some sort of a meaningful offering that's culturally appropriate for them. Um, and then also looking at best practices in other communities. I know the city of Winnipeg is doing some innovative things with their village project downtown. Um, you know, you look at the city of Calgary, they recently did a tiny home village for homeless vets to help them get on their feet. So 
uh, if we look at some of those approaches and see how that could be appropriate for, you know, whether it's our downtown or somewhere else in the city, um, then we can actually maybe solve these problems. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so that was our last question. So now we're going to open up the chat um, to some people who might have some questions. And I have a basket here with all of your names. Um, and so it's just going to be a random, random draw um, to see who gets to answer each question. Um, well, People are formulating their questions. I have um, a statement here from Wally Shank who couldn't be here tonight. So I'm just gonna read that really quickly while we wait for questions to come in. Um, hello and thank you for inviting me to your Beer Z Forum. I am Wally Shank and some of you may know me as I have been a longtime restauranteur and business owner here in Lethbridge. I was retired but needed something to do. So I am working part-time at the Firestone restaurant. Sadly, I am not able to attend tonight's Zoom meeting as I was unable to reschedule my hours at work at last minute. As you know, it is very hard to get enough staff right now, and I could not let my boss down, so I choose to stay at work. I am running for city council as I know I can make a difference in Lethbridge, particularly for fellow business owners like yourself. I was a businessman and realized just how difficult it is to be a small business owner, and I believe I'll get things done for you on city council. I have owned many restaurants over the years. The last rest restaurant I owned was Treats Eatery and the Blue Note Bar on Mayor McGath Drive. A few of you may remember me, um, many years ago, as I was part owner of O'Reilly's and the Cadillac right here in downtown Lethbridge. So like you, I've been a downtown businessman. I'm certain I will make a great representative on council for all of you. I have been there and done that as they say. I understand how difficult it is to run your own small business. I understand and appreciate who you are and how hard you will work to make ends meet. Voting me onto city council will benefit all of you. In closing, thank you for your time and whoever it is you choose, please vote. All right, we'll get down to some questions. Um, so our first question here will be for Dale Lear. Dale Lear. Um, do you support adding solar panels to all municipally owned buildings if technically feasible? Well, it's certainly technically feasible, but is it economically feasible? Um, I mean, right now they're looking at issues with how you're gonna dispose of used solar panels, which only have a lifespan, of maybe 15 to 20 years. Um, and again, you also have to ask yourself, what problem is it that you're actually solving? Yeah, it's great symbology, but at the end of the day, if it's not economically viable, is it really sustainable? And if you look at the actual complete life cycle costs of um, renewable energy, uh, it may not even save the environment by that much. I mean, I think it's cool. I love technology and I love solar, but again, what problem are you actually solving? Thank you. Next, we have Shelby McLeod. There has been a lot of reference to wants versus needs. Since everyone has different needs and wants, how will you determine what is a need versus a want? Well, we'd have to work with city administration. We, when someone comes before city council to the FPC first with their idea and then on to city council, we would have a measurement of uh, what's the benefit to the community and what the, the person is asking for. And if we continue to talk about the bridge and the from an art center, we can see that we'll be a while. But if we look at the exhibition, that money that was invested there will, I believe, will have a pretty quick payback and be an attribute to our city. So uh, it's just sitting down and discussing with your colleagues and working with city administration, looking at KPIs and coming up with a value statement. Thank you. Uh, next will be, Nick Palladino has left still, will be Robin Walker. A lot of you have said that when you're elected, you will find solutions. What have you actively done to prepare for this role prior to deciding to run? Thank you for the question. Um, so for myself, anytime I've, you know, set my sights on doing something, I, I seek to educate myself. So I've been reading up on uh, local government in Canada and how it functions and the relationship between local government and provincial and federal government. And I've also been looking around at, um, you know, best practices and organizations around the country and across North America, um, different things like the Institute for Local Self-Reliance in the United States and some of their initiatives and, and perspectives on supporting local businesses and, and local communities and neighborhoods and, you know, just other strategies that other cities have come up with to deal with either issues that are similar to what we're facing or with some almost identical. Um, and I would continue to do that if elected to council as again, we need to have, make a f informed decisions and not just be shooting from the hip or doing what 
you know, we feel is important as opposed to what's actually important. Thank you. Thank you. Next will be Jerry Firth. What do you feel will be the top three initiatives to this council? I think importantly, we need to address uh, the major issue uh, of our housing crisis. And that uh, also coincides with the opioid crisis. Uh, day after day, we are seeing uh, people uh, struggling and losing their lives as a result of the opioid crisis. And we need to find real solutions and take bold steps in getting the appropriate services in place. A lot of that has to do with housing and it's been spoken already today. Uh, there have been a lot of promises. There's been a lot of plans to direct us in, in, uh, towards uh, transitional housing and social housing uh, all the way up to market housing. Uh, but we have not yet put all pieces in place to address the issue comprehensively. Uh, I would say then on top of that is we need to start to bring the community back together. We're growing well over 100,000 people and we're losing that sense of community, which is pretty typical uh, if you think about it uh, as you grow up. Uh, but we need to find a way to, to have conversations in respectful and dignified ways where we can address our issues together in community. Thank you. Thank you. Next will be Ryan Lepko. If not elected to city council, what are your future plans and how would you advocate slash volunteer for our city? You know what, after 18, 19 months of COVID or however long it's been, you know, just going door to door knocking has been uh, so therapeutic for lack of a better word, just being around people and talking to people from all different uh, walks of life. Uh, I have just loved it. Um, and, and, and listening to people's needs and listening to uh, their struggles and there are a tremendous amount of struggles. Um, I will give a shout out to my sister, uh, Leandra. Uh, she runs the Crystal Meth Anonymous uh, group at the Ms. Church on uh, Friday nights at seven. Um, so if you wanna pass it on to anybody uh, who may be in need, and, you know, I believe change is, uh, you know, it shouldn't be government driven. It should be, you know, individual and community driven. And, uh, you know, what? if I'm not elected, um, I am definitely going to be more out there in the community and uh, being involved. Thank you. Next, oh, he's not here. Michael Petrakis. There are some in the city who believe we have already spent too much time and resources on downtown. Why should we continue to make the effort? Because there is always a way where there is a will. So it's not a matter of just hitting our heads up against the wall and trying something that continues to not work. It's about really using meta-analysis and understanding uh, integrative approach of what would be considered an ideal solution from all the parties involved. In other words, we need a, a long, uh, a long-term solution, which means having a long-form dialogue with all the parties involved. There is a solution. There always is. Thank you. Next is John Middleton Hope. What was your opinion on the SCS, which is a safe consumption site, and would you support it returning, and if so, in what form? Good question, thanks, and I've been very clear. I do not support the supervised consumption site. It was a mistake. Uh, it has created innumerable problems in our community, and let's move forward. We now need to look at a positive future in terms of what needs to be done to resolve the crime issues, the homelessness issues and the crime and disorder issues that we're experiencing downtown. Uh, the CWSS is an example, uh, is a group of um, uh, organizations and people who have come together to, to attempt to resolve this problem by looking at uh, other options that are available across North America, and it's a good start. So that's one of the areas that I, I, would, I would certainly want to focus on from a, from a, uh, uh, a city council perspective. But in, in order to uh, ensure that 
we don't repeat the same kinds of mistakes that we've made in the past. We need to learn from those mistakes and we need to be moving forward. And that is not by way of establishing another supervised consumption site. Thank you. Next is Ryan Parker. Downtown businesses are becoming more and more professional services. How are the fees that businesses are required to pay to the BRZ a hindrance to attracting retail business? Well, I think, I think first of all, you have to respect of autonomy. And then when you think of it, the down PRZ was set up by the local businesses in the downtown and council's really role is to facilitate the fees taken, taken off during property taxes. It's up to that organization and their members and through their annual general meeting to decide if those fees are appropriate. Council's role is really as the person who helps mediate or get the funds from the businesses to the organization. So we just help in setting the final budget and approving the levy but council's role is not to get into the inner workings of how this organization works because they have their own self-sufficient and they're doing their own things and they have a board of directors. Council has to be hands off. Otherwise you start getting into other organizations. And once again, council has to stay in their lane and all we can do is stay on the sidelines and issues such as that. Next is Tim Vanderbeek. This is a little bit of a long one. Lethbridge as a city lacks a lot of policies that ensure accountability of elected officials in comparison, in comparison to cities like Calgary, Red Deer, and Edmonton. Even Clarestone has more reliable and thorough policies. As council, would you support bringing more policies for accountability from municipal officials and committees? I think it's something we could take a look at and definitely see if there is anything that needs to be tightened up. There could be some possible problems that it it definitely do need to be tightened up. And yes, I think that we could actually do a policy review on that and see if there are things that we could be doing better in that. Next is Zachary Hampton. What strategies or ideas do you have for harm reduction in the city? I appreciate the, the question. So, when it comes to the drug issue in the city, obviously um, the SES was the most divisive uh, subject we've probably had in my lifetime. And so going from that, I think that the obvious answer is a move towards detox, detox and rehabilitation. I think that, that we want uh, the addicted on our street, they're not just a number, they're people. And we need to remember the humanity of them. And in addition to that, we want also to, to see them grow and to, and to develop into stronger members of this community. So that's a big part of it. And then, but the other half of harm reduction, and to maybe take this question in a slightly, a slightly different spin, is remember the, the harm that was done to the local businesses downtown, the harm that's done to the, to the people who were accosted downtown. We need to also make sure that we're protecting uh, those citizens as well, and that we're able to uh, just remember all the stakeholders as we continue to move forward. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next is Mark Campbell. There has been a lot of bullying in council as well as at City Hall. What will you do to stop this behavior? Well, I, uh, if I, I'm not quite sure what this person is referring to, uh, if you're talking about just members of City Council or people who are employed at City Hall, there is a distinct code of conduct that must be followed at all times. Uh, and so that has to be that has to be addressed. And if there's some kind of code of conduct that is not being taken care of, then there are pro, there are steps and processes that we will go through to ensure that the, that doesn't continue on. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Ben Christensen. Would you prefer to see historical buildings downtown refurbished and modernized, or demolished and new buildings erected in their place? That's a great question. And uh, the way I would answer that is as follows. Uh, I believe that, city, that the city of Lethbridge has a lot of historical assets in our community. And those historical assets are an important part of the vibrant community we have here and now today. An effort, in an effort to maintain that, we obviously want to preserve those buildings as much as possible, as any community would with you know, good conscience want to preserve their history. And looking at the economic costs to doing so, 
it's actually cheaper to maintain and restore the antique buildings that we have in a lot of cases because those are actually able to be sold privately and restored privately through private investment capital rather than spending tax dollars um, which are already a, a string on city budgets in order to build a new or better future uh, building in those same locations so i believe that um, by soliciting private capital investment, we can actually reduce the cost burden on our city taxpayers and also bring back that vibrant history that is a part of our downtown Lethbridge. Thank you. Uh, the next question for Harold Perversive. Um, this one is directed at incumbents, but I think you could answer this question as well. The last Thanks. four years have been challenging. Many people feel key mistakes were made in regard to how the homelessness and drug addiction issues were handled. What is one strategy you would like to focus on to address these perceived mistakes? Communication. Communication open from the public and from the community. We have to listen to what the, what the public is saying. And, you know, it, it's a shame that groups have to gather at City Hall, at the foot of City Hall, to express concerns. And even when they had assembled at City Hall, not once, did a city councillor come out or the mayor come out to address or to speak to those committees? And I'm not speaking to uh, the ones that I'm aware of because I was involved in these protests and these uh, in information gatherings. And that's to me uh, a critical point that city council neglected in the, in the term that they had. Just the communication. Uh, there has to be awareness so that they can make judgments and decisions based on the facts and the needs of the community. So that would be my utmost concern as a city councillor is to be out in the community, bringing concerns into the into the city hall and also addressing those in a responsible manner. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, if you guys are all okay with it, there's just a couple of people left if we're going over nine o'clock just to get everyone a last question. Next, uh, Marissa Black. A lot of people have answered that they would increase police funding and budgeting. With this increase, how will you prevent police brutality and its effects on our homeless population? So I, as I had already said earlier, I would definitely try to uh, increase initiatives and use that funding in order to uh, have more sensitivity training and then also um, training and de-escalation techniques, especially uh, with vulnerable populations. That's very important. Uh, if you are approaching someone with a attitude of um, what they perceive to be disrespect, it can be very difficult to have a um, proper dialogue with them and be able to come to a good resolution where it doesn't have to be um, brutality as it were. Thank you. Um, next we'll have Bill Ginther. Currently our animal bylaws allow unlimited cats to be in a house. This means you could have 60 cats in a house, have it burned down and kill 30 cats. You could then rebuild the house and put cats back in the house even though no one is living there. This means cat would be, cats would be left unattended at night and if someone were to break in, the cats would be left to escape and no one would discover until the next day. Given all of that, how would you improve our animal bylaws to ensure the safety of animals on Lethbridge? Well, one of the first things I would say is that I can't imagine anyone wanting to have 60 cats in the house. I would have trouble with one. However, I think it's really, really important for us to make sure that we, if we have bylaws that limit the number of cats, those have to be enforced. And I know it's really difficult to uh, expect neighbors to phone uh, in to say, look, there's too many cats in, in our neighborhood. I, I think uh, what we really need to do is to focus on uh, uh, projects or programs like spaying and neutering animals. Our neighborhood has a lot of feral cats that, you know, obviously they just move from place to place. And I think that kind of population needs to be limited. So I think a bylaw should definitely be in place that would limit the number of animals uh, are allowed or cats in particular are allowed in houses because I, it is a safety issue. And uh, for the person living there, in fact, they may not be aware of it. So I would say we need to be very careful that we put in into a place bylaws that limit that and also have ways of enforcing that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so I'm going to kind of go back to some of the uh, questions above for Darcy Logan. Um, 
Many people feel key mistakes were made in regard to the homelessness and drug addiction and how these issues were handled. What is one strategy you would focus on to address these mistakes? I think we, number one, have to uh, give credit to the previous council that were thrown into a crisis that uh, they didn't see coming and uh, didn't have the foresight to know what to, they did the best uh, job that they could do. Um, there was problems, obviously, with the management administration of the supervised consumption site, but harm reduction is absolutely a critical component for helping our vulnerable and marginalized populations. So I support um, those sorts of harm reduction initiatives. Uh, I think we have to invite more stakeholders into those conversations and probably through professionally facilitated uh, roundtable discussions to come up with these sorts of solutions. I'm not an expert, but I look forward to uh, hearing from experts in this field. Thank you. Next we have Boyd Thomas. Would you prefer to see historical buildings downtown refurbished and modernized or demolished and new buildings erected in their place? That's an interesting question because it, uh, there, there has to be a differentiation. Like if you've got an old building and what is its actual condition, uh, can it be responsibly refurbished? Can it be uh, uh, responsibly made safe? Or is it at a place where it's just, it, it's, it's just not feasible to do that? Um, I also think that that is a consideration that city council cannot make on its own, but it does have to take a look at the people that are actually uh, owning the buildings, uh, maybe other people that are interested in investing in such a building. There's there's a lot of considerations to make. And uh, for myself, I'm not much of a history buff as far as buildings and whatnot are concerned. So I, I, it's difficult for me to say anything other than I would really like to have consultation and interaction with the people that are affected by the, the the building where it's at, who's owns it, and who's going to use it. Thank you. Jen Schmidt Rempel. What is your opinion on implementing a ward system in Lethbridge to elect city councillors? Thanks for asking this one. Um, I really do want to hear what the residents of Lethbridge have to say. It's important for residents to have an opportunity to decide how their elected officials are elected, rather than the elected officials deciding how they're elected. Certainly, there are pros and cons to both sides of the issue. Um, we wouldn't have, you know, forums of 32 candidates if we were looking at the ward system. There is, uh, you know, more diversity in candidates coming out when you look at the system. Um, but Ultimately, it's, it needs to be something that we have a discussion around. And whether people think Lethbridge is big enough or not, or is, isn't big enough to do it, it's time we had that discussion and it's valuable to have these discussions right now. Find out what everybody's thinking and then see how to move forward. Thank you. Thank you. Kelty Baird. There are some in the city who believe we have already spent too much time and resources on downtown. Why should we continue to make the effort? Uh, <clears throat> that's actually a really interesting question for me. Um, I have often been frustrated with how much um, focus the city hall and the programs from city hall seem to have on the downtown, often to uh, the detriment of other business districts in the community. That being said, um, we need to tackle the issue of siloing the city as a whole. So if a program is working in, in an area, we need to extend it to the feeder areas of that city. The downtown does not exist without the neighborhoods around it. Um, so it is important to recognize that, you know, people don't just stay in the downtown. They don't just go to the north side. They don't just go to the west or the south. People move around. Um, that being said, there's still a lot of work to do. There are issues that we need to correct and there are our programs that we need to implement. So we do need to continue and finish the work in the downtown. There's a lovely master plan about it, um, but we also need to spread out some of the, uh, the working capital to other areas of the city at this point as well. Thanks. Thank you. Davey Wiggers, what was your opinion on the SCS and would you support a returning? And if so, in what form? Uh... In researching some uh, policies, I um, I went um, to the um, Arches operated SCS um, 
to to investigate uh, some of the um, operational questions that were were coming up. And this was um, before it, it it really kind of blew up. Um, in essence, in a limited format, I do support it as part of a four pillars drug strategy, but um, much more constrained than it than it was at that point in time, and only in so far as it supports um, detox and recovery and uh, reintegrating um, the addicted back into. Uh, be productive members of society. Thank you. Yeah. Rico Dodic. There have been a lot of reference to wants versus needs. Since everyone has different needs and wants, how will you determine what is a need versus a want? Uh, a lot of that uh, deals primarily with capital improvement program budget. If you look at the budget, uh, most of the budget actually is uh, infrastructure uh, need, and those are true needs. So you need uh, water, uh, sewer, wastewater, roads, things of that na nature to be properly funded. But I think where people get really excited is the, uh, the community projects, the ones that uh, where you build stuff so that people can recreate and, uh, and have fun uh, taking their family, things of that nature. Those ones are a little bit more problematic. You've got a situation where less than 30% of the electorate actually votes. And when you uh, do open houses for operating budgets or capital improvement program budgets, you have a smattering of people show up. So what ends up happening is that you do canvas uh, the folks that do are willing to give their opinion. And based on that, you get a myriad uh, of uh, projects, all of which are worthy. And then the city council who has been elected by the electorate actually have to put their collective knowledge and wisdom to work to make the best decision possible. That's how you deal with it. That's how it's been done in the past. Unfortunately, that's how it's gonna be dealt with in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Two more questions to go. Uh, well, this one's for Jeff Carlson. Hello. Um, as, I'm here. <laughs> hello. <laughs> as council would would as a council person, would you support bringing more policies for accountability for municipal officials and committees? And sorry, what was the final word there? Um, okay. uh, committees. Oh, and committees. E excellent. Um, I think a lot of that is in place. As a council, over the last four years, we did revamp a lot of our policies around this. We did put in a, a code of conduct uh, for council. Uh, to follow. It is very stringent uh, and has uh, various processes in it. We also ensured that all of our committees uh, had similar uh, processes put in place. I guess if you want to expand that type of accountability, uh, you have to look at things uh, that cost money. And if the city's willing to do that, uh, a, uh, a municipal ombudsman position, so to speak, uh, for those types of complaints or thoughts or accountability issues. Right now, um, folks still do have an avenue, and it's to the Minister of Municipal Affairs in the province. As you know, uh, municipalities are children of the province. We have to follow all their all their legal requirements and all the le legislation. And so though there are avenues in place, but if there are thoughts about how we can be more accountable, and not just for council, but for the committees, I'd love to hear those, those thoughts because we've tried to make great strides. Thank you. And lastly, Belinda Croson. There are some in the city who believe we've already spent too much time and resources on downtown. Why should we continue to make the effort? Actually, in our last term, uh, that was one of the concerns I heard and one of the things I helped to work on was expanding our heart of our city so that it covers the warehouse district and 13th Street North as well. So we did expand that area um, because, yes, there's a lot of amazing businesses and amazing districts that need support. Having said that, the downtown is a vital place. It is a place where we have a large number of people. The last I saw 6,800 people work downtown. It is an economic hub, and it is a place that we have to truly think about as part of the economic sector of Lethbridge. It is also the place where we have um, a lot of the arts sector. Um, I've listened to people throughout the evening talk about the arts sector and talk about public art, but they fail to mention that arts is actually an economic driver as well. People work in the arts, there's professionals in the arts. So we have that part of the community as well. And a lot of that is centered downtown. So when we're looking at the economy of our community, if we don't spend some focus on the downtown, we miss a lot. Thank you. And actually lastly, but not least, Jen Prosser. Uh -huh. 
What do you think you bring to the table that otherwise would not be represented on council? Uh, that's a great question, and, and I, you know, I hope that I bring a variety of perspectives that may not be represented on council right now. Um, you know, my work in community building has really centered how I how I look at the city and how I look at what the city needs. But in particular, my work with the uh, COVID nineteen uh, community support circle on Facebook, fifty two hundred people belong to this this Facebook group, and it's an incredibly active site where many people are identifying issues and needs that they've been having, whether it's in terms of information, housing security, food security, or even just the ability to connect with our friends and neighbors during the pandemic. And I think having that perspective and, and, and talking to these folks regularly uh, is really key because I can bring those ideas to council, to the council table, as well as my experience working in policy driven environments. I've worked on Parliament Hill uh, within the, the federal government, political part of the federal government. I know how governments are meant to work. I understand our constitutional and charter responsibilities, as well as what is possible under the MGA, because there is a lot that we can do that fits with under our, um, our work as a municipality. So I want to bring all those perspectives to the table. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and that concludes our question um, for the evening. Um, I just wanted to let um, the people listening know that you can head to the city's website on the municipal election and find websites and emails for all the candidates um, and ask your specific question to them directly via those channels. Um, thanks everyone for coming tonight and I appreciate you guys all being here and I'm sure all the voters do as well. Thanks, Emily. Thanks, Lana. Thanks, Thank everyone. You. Thank, Thank you. you for everything. Appreciate good it. Night, everybody. Good night, everyone. Have a great night, everyone. Thank, thank you. you. And good evening. And thank you, Emily, for organizing this. Have a good night. Yeah. Good, good, good night. Good night. Have a good night. Yeah. Good night, everyone. Good night, everyone. Good night.